Hey y'all, I'm Jay. I'm back with another video where I'm gonna share my process of making things with Framer X. If you've been framering for a while, you might have seen some of my tutorials from 2015, very well received by the way, about how to make things with Framer Studio. Now the bar's been totally leveled with Framer X and as I learn the tool and learn how to make things, I'm gonna share those things that I'm making right here. This is my second Framer X video and because it's video number two, I'm gonna share two ways to make tab navigation in Framer X. I'm gonna be writing some code, so if you wanna follow along, make sure you have a text editor instead. I'm using VS Code and if you want to download the finished project file maybe to tell me what I'm doing wrong or that you've got a better way the links down in the description before I get started let's fast forward in time so we can see what we're actually gonna build it's a navigation bar and it's got three tabs each with its own on and off state that helps us get around this section of a uh, pet photo app the first way we're gonna build this we'll just use links in Framer X it'll take us literally a minute and it'll give us a basic way to navigate between these three views the most popular cat photos my favorite cat photos and the cat photos that I've saved there's none of those I guess uh, that'll be good enough for some of us some of the time but there's another way to build the same prototype using code code overrides specifically which will let us animate the transition between sections it'll have us some writing some JavaScript but sometimes a little effort's gonna be worth it for extra polish so let's get started. I already designed our navigation, this app header here, and a couple of screens for the app. I used two packages from the component store to speed this along. First of all, this material design package has pretty epic breadth and coverage of material UI components, so I grabbed the header from there. The second package I used are feather icons, which you can get using the icon generator package or the actual feather icons package itself, and those are all the icons in the tab bar. Let's take a quick look at how this tab bar is set up. It's got three tabs, one for each of the three screens. I'm just going to take this entire header and drop it into each of these three screens by copying and pasting. And now I'm going to use Framer X's link tool to start connecting this first set of tabs to the right screens. First, I'll select the favorites tab, and then over on the right here, I'll hit the little plus sign by link. You'll see this arrow appears attached to that tab on one end, and then I can connect that right to our favorite screen. We'll stop for a second, I'll show you what that did. In Framer's preview window, I can tap the heart tab and uh, it's kind of the wrong transition, but we're going to the right place. I don't want this push transition, but that's super easy to change. So with this favorites tab highlighted, I'll change the transition property of my link from push to instant. And now I'll start wiring up all of these other tabs on each of the screens. Now I wanna make sure I do the same thing with the save tab and I'll go one by one, making sure my links are going to the right screens with each of these noodles pointing to the right place and making sure that each time I change the link transition from push to instant. Over in the preview window, you can see that everything's working as I'm bouncing from screen to screen. Now I can't tell which tab's active yet, but that's pretty easy to fix. Now on the feed screen, I'm gonna select the glyph inside each of these two inactive tabs and change that glyph's opacity to 50%. I'll do the same one by one to each of the inactive tabs on the other screens as well. And now our prototype's tab bar shows me exactly where I am in the app. So that was easy and for a lot of cases what we got here is fine for just a click through prototype, but I want some animation when I switch tabs. So I'm gonna start over with the same design assets and now I'm gonna bring some code into the mix too. The setup's gonna be a little different this time. I'm gonna create a new frame down here for our app prototype, I'll just call it app. And when everything's done, we're just gonna have everything in this one frame. I'll bring my header down into this frame and I'm gonna kinda go in the opposite order that I just did with the link-based prototype. First set up the active and inactive states of the tab nav and then we'll hook it up to switch screens. I'm gonna select one of these tabs and then I'll go over here to the code tool and select new file from this dropdown. VS Code's gonna open up with an automatically generated file and now I'm gonna have to adjust all these windows so I can see what the hell is going on and honestly, I haven't really found a great way to get Framer X, the text editor, Framer X's preview, and a console all arranged in a way that I love yet, but this is gonna work. I got Framer X on the left, I moved the preview kinda hanging out in the middle, and VS Code over on the right. Anyway, the way that I see it is whenever I tap a tab, I need to light that one up to full opacity and make sure all the other tabs get unlit, set to an inactive state at 50% opacity. Um, so I'm going to go over into the code and I'm going to delete all this except these imports because we're going to need those as we go through this. I'm going to create an override function that I'll then attach to each of the three tabs. I'm going to call this function tab button and this might look a little complicated if you haven't seen this yet but it's really simple. I'm going to stub out the function here and then I'll go back over to Framer X and connect it to each of the three tabs. If you have no idea what an override function is, by the way, I put a link in the description to some Framer docs that can get you started. 
Now you can see the function I just wrote in VS Code is available to me in the override dropdown. That's awesome, and I'll select it for each of these three tabs. I want to keep track of which tabs currently selected, and the way I'm going to do that is by initializing a data object. A data object is a framer thing that holds animatable values and things that are going to change over time. And uh, I'm going to create a property called current tab and make it null by default. Then what I want to do is update the current tab's value every time I tap one of these. So the way to do that, I'll create this return statement in our override function that we just wrote. And on tap, I'm going to update data.currentTab to the ID of the current tab. Now this by itself is not going to do anything visible because I also need to change the opacity of the tab based on whether it's the current tab or not. So out here I'm going to set a value for tab opacity to 0.5 which is the default value of an inactive tab. And then if and only if the current tab selected I'll make that value 1. In this return statement I'll set the opacity to this tab opacity value. And now over here in the preview window you can see that all of the tab states are updating as I click them just the way I want. Now I want to actually bring these screens into the mix and what I want is whenever I tap a tab the corresponding screen to that tab should slide into view. The way I'm going to do this is first make a big frame that wraps around these three screens. I'm going to line them up flush, I'm going to select them all and then hit command return to wrap them in a parent frame, name that frame app screens and then I am also one by one going to select each one and make sure that it's pinned to the top and to the left. This is important because if you forget this things are going to get weird when you animate this container later. I'll take this and I'll bring it down into our app down here behind the app header. Now you can't see these other two screens anymore, but I promise they're there. When you hover over the container, you can see the bounding box, and if you drag it around, you can see them too. Now what I want to do is animate the position of this entire container, depending on the tab I tap, so that the right screen's showing. I'm back over to my text editor, and I'm going to add another value to this data object, which will ultimately be my X position, or the left position of this container. Since I'm going to animate it in a minute, I will make it an animatable value. Now, animatables are another framer thing that just designate a value as something that's going to change over time. I want this value to change in increments of 360, which is the uh, screen width, depending on which tab that I tap. The way I'll do this is I'll store all the tabs in an array, and then when I click one of the tabs, I'm going to find its index in that array and use that to figure out where to animate the screen container to by multiplying negative 360 by that index value. First I'll create an empty array out here that we're just about to fill up with references to the tabs and now I'll write an override function, another one. I'll call it tab container because I'm going to attach it to the container of the tabs and it just does one invisible thing which is drops references to the containers children into this array. I'm going to go back to framerx and add this function as a code override to the tab containers frame. Just a couple more steps here. I'm going to get an index value of 0, 1, or 2 from the current tab by finding its index in the tab array. Then I'm going to animate this container left value by an increment of negative 360 times that index value. And I'll do this using framers animate function. I'll use the ease out curve and I want it to be pretty quick. So just a quarter second duration. Finally, I need to hook up the actual container of these screens to receive this value and animate. So I'll create our third override function called screen container. And all this one's going to do, it's going to set the left property to our data object's container left value. And now back here in Framer X, when I add it as the code override to our app screen container, every time that value updates, as the animate function does its thing, the screen container will update as well. Back to the preview window one last time to see our tabs doing their thing in the prototype. There's always more we can do. For example, if you reload the prototype with Command R right now, you'll see our initial tab isn't selected. This is actually a, a pretty quick one line fix. And I also might want to come back later and actually animate the tab states themselves. But you know, for now I feel like this is a job well done. Remember there's a link to the finished framer project with both sets of tabs, plus a couple other links to things that I talked about in the description. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.